This is Special Prosecutor Larry Clayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth, for competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty, for the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Klayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. A lot of news that's out there, a lot of news that Freedom Watch and I are making with regard to all of these corruption scandals that are going on. But let's first start with the fact that I have asked that people sign a petition on our website at freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org. Please go to that. Sign the petition to urge President Trump, through his Justice Department, to have me appointed special counsel, because I'll get the job done. And please donate to Freedom Watch, because we need the resources. We're small. We are the mouse that roared, but we need to get bigger to take on these forces of evil that we're up against. And I'll tell you why we need to get bigger. Because we don't have a Justice Department. You know that I was formerly a Justice Department prosecutor. I've got to tell you something. If I had to do it all over again, I'd be a defense lawyer. Because what I've seen in the corruption at the Justice Department, not just when I was there, and that's why I started Judicial Watch years after that, if you were on the right side of the fence, you, got pro- you didn't get prosecuted. If you're on the wrong side, you did. But it's gotten much worse in recent years. And we know that the entire legal system today, and I'm probably the only lawyer that will say this straight up, it's almost corrupt top to bottom, particularly when you're dealing with cases that touch on politics, cases that deal with politicians, cases that deal with powerful, rich people, cases that deal, if you get a judge, who's a leftist, you know probably he's going to rule against you. If you get somebody on the right, maybe you have a chance that he might rule against you, but they're for you. But they're all products of the establishment. They get there because of patronage, because their law firms, labor unions, corporations gave a lot of money to either the president and or the senator of the state that they come from. And what we have on the bench are politicians in robes. So we have a complete breakdown of our legal system. And we particularly have a complete breakdown, as I started off saying, because of our Justice Department. It's not a Justice Department. It's become a criminal enterprise, in effect. And who is the Attorney General sitting on top of this right now? Someone who's not a lion. In fact, he's a mouse. He even looks like a mouse, unfortunately. He's a very polite guy. But, you know, I don't think somebody's nice if they're not doing their job. So I used to say that he was nice. Now, I don't believe that Jeff Sessions, frankly, is nice. Because if he was nice, he put the interests of the American people ahead of everything else. And what he's done is bury his head in the sand because he himself is under investigation by Robert Mueller, the special counsel investigating so-called Russian collusion and obstruction of justice for the firing of Comey. He did participate in the decision by President Trump to fire Comey. So he's reflexive about that. He also, contrary to false testimony he gave on Capitol Hill, in his confirmation hearings, where he said he didn't meet with the Russian ambassador. In fact, he did meet with the Russian ambassador on more than one occasion in his Senate office. Now, that was benign. That was harmless. He didn't need to lie about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. But he's feeling like he's on the defense. He's thinking that he might be indicted or he might even be impeached. So basically, he's rolling over to the Democrats. He's rolling over to Mueller. Uh, He's letting Rod Rosenstein, the number two at the department, who he nominated— Uh, who got confirmed, who was an Obama holdover, former U.S. attorney in the District of Maryland, called the shots. This guy's not just establishment, but he's to the left. And he's, he's typical Washington. In other words, cover your own backside, but take care of yourself before you take care of the interests of the American people, because this is all one big club here. I'm in Washington today. I'm looking across at Georgetown. Georgetown, the soirees, the parties, everything else, everybody wants to be part of this establishment, and that's more important than the interests of the American people. And if you look on the horizon, as I've said before, you have cranes building here in the United 
in Washington, D.C. like you've never seen before. There's never been a recession here. This is a situation that is out of control, and we need somebody that's really hard-hitting that will bring President Obama, former President Obama, to justice for the crimes that he committed. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, former uh, everybody in the, in the Obama administration who harmed the interests of the United States. And we know about Fusion GPS. We know about the Steele dossier. We know about the Clinton Foundation, how there's been all kinds of bribery. We know how illegal wiretaps were obtained on the Trump Tower, wiretapping President Trump, General Michael Flynn, and others around him. We know how that was used to indict General Flynn, who's a good man. And we can't sit here and and watch this just unfold. And Sessions this week, to take the pressure off of him, to take the monkey off his back, you know, unfortunately, he's more like the monkey than the monkey on his back. He forwarded everything on to the Inspector General of the Justice Department. Now, what is the Inspector General? That's the investigative inner arm of the Justice Department. The Inspector General is an Obama appointee, Michael Horowitz. Uh, He's a leftist. Now, sure, he'll come up with some findings, but nothing ever comes out of the IG that ever results in criminal prosecution. It'll be slaps on the wrist for special agents Peter Strzok and his girlfriend Lisa Page, who participated in all of the illegal stuff with regard to President Trump and people around him. Nothing will come of it. It's a way to bury it. How can you have the fox in the hen house investigating the fox. And that's what he's doing. So you need a special counsel that's going to be out there that's going to do a real investigation, that's going to bring indictments against Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, against people in and around President Obama and the intelligence community that legally wiretapped, people like former CIA Director John Brennan, who's reportedly a Muslim, a Muslim convert, like former Deputy of, uh, Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, who lied to Congress that there wasn't this mass surveillance on the American citizenry. These kinds of people need to be brought to justice. James Comey, Mueller himself, for leaking grand jury information. We need to clean out the rat's nest. The IG isn't going to do it. They're just going to issue a report months from now, maybe years from now. Everything At that point, President Trump's administration can be destroyed. Our vote will have been destroyed. This country's headed on a downward spiral. We're going to talk about it later. But this country and the world are at great risk right now. And meanwhile, Congress, I mean, they go through their dog and pony show. They get, you know, stuff, and then they hand it over to Sean Hannity, and they give it to Sarah Carter, and they give it to John Solomon, and everybody goes on TV, and Fox's ratings soar because people are watching it every night. And i got to say, I watch it every night, too. And that's good up to a certain point. But Sean Hannity's not going to bring about justice as, as much as he, his heart might be in the right direction, I'm sorry to say. Nor will Tucker Carlson. Nor will anybody else at Fox. And, of course, you have people at Fox like Shepard Smith that support the left. So you can't depend on the media, even on our side. And I commend Fox for at least covering it. But that's not going to do it. And these congressmen up there in Capitol Hill, like Devin Nunes of the House Intelligence Committee, I went to him early on with Dennis Montgomery about widespread surveillance of judges, Supreme Court justices, about Trump early on. He gave me the back of the hand. He didn't want to hear it. He just wanted to do this little narrow part of illegal surveillance. And he's using that for notoriety. He's using that to raise money for his own reelection. He's using that for his own self-esteem. I hope that it'll go further, but he can't go further if he has to refer things to Jeff Sessions. It'll go right into the tank, right into the uh, inspector general. And that's why you need a special counsel, because let me explain what a special counsel is. Special counsel is like a Justice Department in and of itself. But it's independent. It has the authority of the Justice Department, but it's not going to be overseen by anyone, excuse me, I'm getting hoarse just talking about this, that will prevent the special counsel from bringing indictments, trying the cases, and seeking convictions. And if Larry Klayman is named special counsel, I will pledge to you my honor everything I own, which is very little, frankly, and my life to get this job done because we need to clean out the rat's nest in Washington, D.C. And I'm not just talking about the Clinton criminals. I'm talking about the Obama criminals. I'm talking about in the intelligence agencies. But I'm also talking about we need to clean out corrupt judges here. And when was the last time the House 
Judiciary Committee, and the House of Representatives impeached a judge. Last time I can remember, it was a judge from Miami by the name of Alice e. Hastings, who was impeached for taking bribes. You know what happened after that? He ran for Congress, and he became a congressman. He's still there, believe it or not. There's no accountability on the federal judiciary. They circle the wagons. They protect themselves. If you file an ethics complaint, it's other judges that they eat lunch with that are making the decision as to whether or not they committed ethical infractions in terms of discipline. And obviously, they're not going to discipline their fellow judge because the same thing may happen to them, and they'll need the same support of those judges to let them go scot-free. And that's what we have. We have a real breakdown in our entire entire legal system. But I can cut through it. Go to our website at freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org. Sign the petition to have me named special counsel. Sign the petition to have me named special counsel. I'm repeating it again. And donate to our cause. It's super important. And please... If you're listening to this radio show on a blog and you're not listening to it live, tweet it to your friends. Tell them to retweet. Tell them to send it out on Facebook. Tell them to send it out on whatever medium you can, Amazon Fire, Roku, whatever, because this is our last chance to save our country peacefully. If we don't do it this way, we're going to be into a violent revolution. The people are getting very smart. Look at my website Freedom Watch's website, freedomwatchusa.org. Read the comments to the petition. There are nearly 18,000 people that signed it. We need 100,000 people to sign it to get President Trump to force the Justice Department to do this. His lawyers are giving him bad advice. They've told him just to get along, to go along. Well, you know what? He's going along to his own extinction, and we love this president, and he's our last hope. If we don't keep him in power, we're going to have somebody even much worse than Obama and Clinton. So go to our website, freedomwatchusa.org, sign that petition. I'm going to be right back. I thank you for being great supporters of me and Freedom Watch over all these years. And let's God bless you and God bless America. And we'll be back with another segment shortly. Special Prosecutor, Very bad. Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. I want to talk now about Robert Mueller himself, what he's been doing. Because, you know, he indicted 13 Russians. He'll never get them extradited, much more convicted. It was all cosmetic. Uh, he's playing the game to try to destroy the relationship, whatever there is. And Russia is an adversary and Putin's a bad guy. We agree. But you're taking it to a fever pitch right now with the Russians. And I'll tell you something. Putin is not stupid. He's smart. And Putin this week just sent a video out showing atomic missiles, warheads, attacking the state of Florida. Of course, even attacking Mar-a-Lago, where the president lives. Now, do you think it's smart for the Democrats, for MSNBC, for, as Mark Levin says, MSLSD. You know, they used to have an expression at, at MSNBC, which was lean forward. I used to say bend over because that's probably more appropriate. CNN and New York Times, Washington Post, and all of these vicious leftist Marxists in the media. You know, the irony is, is that Russia to them was their mecca before Trump became president. They're socialists. The Russians, you know, haven't changed into a capitalist society. They're basically just re- packaged communists that are currently still there. The people of Russia, there are many good people in Russia, but they're still under the yoke of Vladimir Putin, who was a KGB agent, still is actually, and is a communist. So for them to try to be so scared and say, okay, Trump's going to compromise us with Russia. Trump's going to do this. He's in bed with Putin. Well, that's disingenuous because these people have more of an affinity to Russia, former Soviet Union, than they do to this country. They're just using it to try to destroy Trump. But what are they doing? They're totally destroying the relationship that may exist, at least cordially, at least to be able to cooperate, at least to be able to discuss things with Russia. So Putin sent out this video worldwide this week saying that, look, you want to play this game? I've got nuclear weapons. You know what? 
Your, your nuclear weapons in the United States, they're old. They're rotting in silos in North Dakota. That's true. That's why we just appropriated more money. But it's going to take us a decade to update it. Some of them are in silos where water leaks. We don't even know if these things work. Occasionally they test them, you know, but that's a, a specific test where they're making sure it works so that we're not embarrassed. But our nuclear arsenal is old. The Russians now are modernizing it. They're more of a threat than we are to them. And frankly, they're military stronger than ours right now. So why are we provoking them unnecessarily with people like Robert Mueller with the deadbeats, the slime balls from West Hollywood, Adam Schiff on TV of the House Intelligence Committee and others? Why are we bashing that? So it doesn't make any sense to me. But here's the thing about Mueller. He's been leaking grand jury information. To leak grand jury information is a crime. He and his staff have been doing it. What they want to do is destroy the president of the United States, Donald Trump, and people around him, including his family, before they even get a day in court. So it doesn't matter whether he ever ever brings indictments or ever seeks convictions or does an impeachment report. He's trying to bring the president down now with all of these leaks, most of which are false, and that's illegal. So... Months ago, I had filed a complaint myself at the Justice Department with the Inspector General and the Office of Professional Responsibility seeking to remove Mueller. I'll tell you, this is, this is the story about the IG. They didn't even acknowledge getting my complaint. They pretended I didn't exist. I could go off the face of the earth. They don't care. So I filed a court case to force an investigation by Inspector General. What happened? Sessions' his lawyers came in and said, oh, no, Clayman can't do that. He has no jurisdiction. The judge, an Obama appointee, Rudolph Contreras, I call him Contreras, dismissed it. I've got it up on appeal now. I've got it in front of the D.C. Circuit, which is highly leftist, mostly Democrats. It's a long shot. But forget about the inspector general or the Office of Professional Responsibility, whether it's with regard to Clinton corruption, Obama corruption, or Mueller corruption. That's why we need a special counsel. That's why you need Larry Klayman. I'm the only one that can and will do it. And I know this may sound conceited. But from the bottom of my heart, I know that. I've been in Washington 30, year, 30 years. Actually, I've been a lawyer for 40 years practicing in and around Washington. 30, 20, some I was here, 25. I come now frequently. I'm here about half the time. I'll tell you something. Nothing's going to happen unless someone has that independent authority to do what needs to be done legally. So go to freedomwatchusa.org. Freedomwatchusa.org. Sign the petition to have me named independent special counsel. Get 100,000 signatures, and the president's going to have to pay attention, and so will the Justice Department. FreedomWatchUSA.org. In the meantime, before I come back for the next segment, go to that website, sign that petition, and send this radio show to all of your friends because they need to know the truth. Frankly, no one else will tell the truth because they just want to cover it up so they can be part of this establishment. that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor Larry Klayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to FreedomWatchUSA.org and donate. I want to talk now about someone who I've known for a long time. He's a friend of mine. He's a courageous guy. He kind of does it by himself. He's a little bit of a loner, but there's nothing wrong with that. There are very few people who are even approaching, you know, me in terms of what they'll do and taking risks in this country. And this is one guy who actually is a lot like me, Ty Clevenger, C-L-E-V-E-N-G-E-R. Check it out. There's an article last Friday, Saturday, on Washington Times. Ty brought—he's a lawyer—he brought a bar complaint— against David Kendall of Williams and Conley. And what was the basis of that? He brought the complaint in the District of Columbia, Bar Disciplinary Council there, and the District of Maryland, Bar Disciplinary Council there. He brought it against the lawyers of the Clintons, David Kendall. Now, I fought David Kendall 
for decades. He's a charming guy. Most of these Democrats are very charming when you meet them. I met them sometimes at White House Correspondents' Dinners. I would never let them put their hands into my pocket. I never wanted to get close to them. I never wanted them to think that I was their friend. But I, I saw the way they, they behave. They're very well dressed. They're slick. They're the devil in sheep's clothing, in effect. David Kendall's the one, along with others at this law firm of Williams and Connolly, which not coincidentally represents the Washington Post, which is out to destroy President Trump, was out to destroy me during my years at Judicial Watch, still an adversary, has turned far left under the ownership of Jeff Bezos of Amazon. They're radical leftists now, and they're vicious. David Kendall's the one who participated with Hillary Clinton and people around her like Cheryl Mills and others in destroying the 33,000 emails that Hillary Clinton destroyed that she sent on her private email server, which would show all kinds of corruption and would also show that her website was compromised, giving rise to the deaths of the ambassador at Benghazi and people around him like Ty Woods and Sean Smith, whose parents I represent in a wrongful death case, not coincidentally, against Hillary Clinton. Well, Ty filed these bar complaints both in the District of Columbia and in Maryland, saying that David Kendall and the people that assisted him at Williams and Connolly should be disbarred. They destroyed evidence, they obstructed justice, and they committed other crimes. That's what he alleged. Lawyers are supposed to be honest. I don't need to get into the intricacies of our code of professional responsibility, but we're not supposed to further crimes, as was alleged by Ty Clavenger with regard to David Kendall and his colleagues. Now, what happened in the District of Columbia? The assistant bar disciplinary canal counsel, Elizabeth Herman, who's donated money to Obama, who's highly partisan. Uh, in fact, the bar there is very leftist dismissed it summarily. They wouldn't even want to investigate it. It's gone. Ty then went to Maryland, and he filed another bar complaint there. And Maryland dismissed it, too, because Maryland's even more leftist than the District of Columbia. Well, I doubt that. I guess I'm exaggerating a little bit. It's about equally as a leftist. They used to call Maryland the People's Socialist Republic of Maryland. I think it still fits. So the Bar Disciplinary Council in Maryland also dismissed the complaint. Well, Ty then went to the court to the state court in Maryland, and he got a good judge. And the judge ordered the Maryland State Bar to investigate the crimes allegedly committed by David Kendall in assisting Hillary Clinton in obstructing justice and destroying 33,000 emails. Well, this week, that was appealed. It went up to the appellate court in Maryland, the equivalent of the Maryland Supreme Court. And first of all, the Bar Disciplinary Council, and Mr. Frosch, didn't want it televised. The court refused. No, it was televised. And he represented the interests of the Clintons and David Kendall at that hearing. We don't have a decision yet on what that Maryland Supreme Court's going to do, but you pretty much can guess what they're going to do. I mean, it's a bunch of leftists up there. We had one good judge at the lower court level that agreed with Ty. So basically, that's doomed. But it tells you something here. I was telling you in the earlier segment how judges will not review the unethical conduct of other judges, and there's no other way that you can reach them short of suing them. And, of course, they, have, they claim they have immunity, and the other judges who sit in judgment as to whether you can sue them dismiss the cases because it's kind of circling the wagons, you know, unwritten rule. I'll protect you, you protect me if it ever happens to me. So there's not only no disciplinary oversight of judges— but there's no disciplinary oversight of the powerful, politically connected lawyers, particularly in and around the Washington, D.C. area. Who do they burn, the bar associations? They burn the little guy, the little guy that can't fight back. They'll take, you know, they want to have their scalps, and they'll take away the licenses of, of little guys. Sometimes it's justified, but they'll never, ever touch a big guy. There was a, a big lawyer here many years ago called Clark Clifford who engaged in bank fraud with BCCI. It was a major scandal. They let him go, too, the Bar Association. So did the courts. Clark Clifford claimed when he was being prosecuted that he was sick, that he couldn't stand trial, and the prosecutor ultimately let him go. There is no accountability for the powerful and the elite, whether it's in front of the courts, whether it's in bar associations, whether it's judges looking at the conduct of other judges or whether it's even on Capitol Hill. Let me give you an example of that. Eric Holder, who was found in contempt by the Government Oversight and Reform Committee over Fast and Furious. James Clapper, 
who was found to have lied in front of the Senate Intelligence Committee that there was no mass surveillance, when in fact, thanks to Edward Snowden, we found out that there was. John Brennan, former director of the CIA, also lied about illegal surveillance. He was actually surveilling, ironically, a Democrat sentiment, uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein, who was then chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, who was just trying to do a simple investigation. They don't care if Democrat, Republican, they'll try to destroy anybody that might touch them. So, ladies and gentlemen, patriots, friends, citizens, people under God, we have no legal system. It's gone. It's absolutely gone when it comes to holding the elite accountable and to hold judges accountable and to hold corrupt lawyers accountable. And that's why many years ago I started Judicial Watch in 1994 to investigate and prosecute government and legal corruption and abuse. Now, over the years, Judicial Watch morphed into something else. I left Judicial Watch in the year 2003 to run for the U.S. Senate in Florida. I left it in the hands of someone who's not a lawyer, Tom Fitton. So he converted the mission of it to mostly just getting documents from the government. Well, getting documents from the government's good, but what are you going to do with the documents when you get them? You have to bring prosecutions. They don't do that. They don't have real trial lawyers there. I left. I am a trial lawyer of 40 years. I'm also someone who was a former federal criminal prosecutor. I've done criminal defense work. And if I was made special counsel, I would surround myself with people who are experts, with people who know how to prosecute, including myself, and we would have a team, not biased, not hacks like Mueller, but people who would be fair and impartial. Now, we know that these crimes have been committed. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. So, yes, we will get indictments. We will get convictions. We will bring the elite to justice. And I'm not just talking about Robert Mueller. I'm not just talking about James Comey, Mueller's friend. I'm not just talking about Brennan or Clapper. I'm not just talking about Obama, Clinton. I'm talking about rooting out the rat's nest in the judiciary. And let me give you another example of that. There's a judge on the D.C. court named Amy Berman Jackson. I was standing in lunch line yesterday. I have a case here, and I just said hello to her because I try to be cordial. And she said hello to me. She looked very nervous because I've been very critical. She's sitting on an inve- on a criminal case that was brought by brought against Paul Manafort and Rick Gates by Robert Mueller. She's very partisan. First thing she did, it reminds you of the Bundy trial with Judge Gloria Navarro, she won't let Manafort or Gates post bond to get out of prison. The best she does is lets them stay at house arrest. House arrest, so they can't leave their house. They've got a GPS ankle bracelet and everything else. To this day, they're under house arrest. And Manafort, in particular, wanted to put up $11 million in bail. You know, you're only supposed to be kept in prison if you're a flight risk. This guy's not a flight risk. I don't know whether he did what was accused or not. It has nothing to do with Russian collusion. It should never have been brought. This indictment is totally illegal, and we're challenging that, too. But Amy Berman Jackson kept him under house arrest and then put a gag order on him and his partner, Rick Gates, that they couldn't even go out and defend themselves in public when they're, the crap is being beaten, beaten out of them when MSNBC, CNN, The Washington Post, The New York Times, Huffington Post, Slate, every one of these slimy leftist publications that just wants to destroy anybody who's a conservative or Republican or whatever. So this judge has been protecting Mueller. I also drew this judge in the case where I sought to have Mueller investigated for criminal leaks. Before the complaint was even served, before the other side got it, which would have been the Sessions Justice Department, you know, God forbid, she dismisses it before anybody has a chance to do anything. This is the same judge who dismissed a case which is up on appeal now for the parents of Ty Woods and Sean Smith. Pat Smith, you saw her at the Republican National Convention. Her son sadly died, was killed at Benghazi. And also Charles Woods, whose son, Ty Woods, was also killed with the ambassador. They were both working undercover for the United States along with the CIA there at the consulate. That was Libya. And they're heroes. And these are gold star parents. This judge dismisses the case I brought against Hillary Clinton for wrongful death for disclosing the location, either negligently or by design, through her unsecure private email server, you, and also for defamation, because Hillary had called them liars when she told the truth, when they told the truth, the parents, and what Hillary had told them, that this was only an attack 
by a bunch of Muslims who were upset about a video about Mohammed, which wasn't true when she knew that was a terrorist attack by al-Qaeda. Well, when does she decide that she's going to dismiss it? And, of course, she's an appointee of Obama. She thinks that if Hillary Clinton will be elected, she may go to the higher court, perhaps, or some other appointment. That's what I think is in her mind. She dismisses this on the eve of Memorial Day. What could be more heartless? What could be more cruel? What could be more insidious? What could be more disgusting? What could be more evil than to do that to Gold Star parents when they're grieving for their sons? It was like st- stabbing them in the heart with a knife. And I've had her in other cases, too. I told you with Mueller. But this is what we've got on the judiciary. So these people need to be held accountable, too. The House Judiciary Committee will never impeach them. But if I'm special counsel, I'll be starting grand jury investigations into what, in fact, caused them to take these illegal acts. And if, in fact, I catch them doing it, as I believe I can, I will bring indictments against federal judges. And it's not just going to be impeaching. It's going to be throwing them in prison where they belong. Because I'll tell you something, figuratively speaking, I'm always in favor of peace. I'm in favor of peaceful revolution. Jefferson, though, you might remember Thomas Jefferson, he felt that we were probably at some point going to have more revolutions where blood would be spilled. I don't want to see that, but we've got to use the peaceful means. But these judges need to be held accountable, too. And I say this figuratively. If there ever is another American revolution, the first to be brought to the guillotine, shall we say, like the French Revolution— should be the federal judges and the other judges who defied their oath and did not protect us, the American people. I am not one of those conservatives who believes that the judiciary is an inferior branch of government. I believe that our founding fathers may their souls rest in peace in heaven, which is obviously where they are, believe that they were to protect us from the tyranny of the other two branches of government. It was a check. But instead, these judges are in the hip pocket of the sovereign, They're in the hip pocket of the people who got them nominated and confirmed. They're the yes men and women of these corrupt politicians. And that's why we fought the revolution, because when the founding fathers and the colonialists who supported them saw that the judges in the court of King George, King James at the time, were corrupt, that they were just the yes men of King George III, that was the final straw. That's what broke the back of the British crown and caused us to declare independence in my native city, my birthplace of Philadelphia, on July 4th, 1776. And that's why we have to rise up. I will rise up with you legally and peacefully. Go to freedomwatchusa.org. Freedomwatchusa.org. We are one nation under God. Let us look to God for guidance. But, you know, if anybody's out there that wants to do what I want to do, let them step forward now. But right now, I'm going to do the job. I'm going to clean the rat's nest out. So go to freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org. Sign our petition. We need 100,000 signatures. I need your support. I need God's grace. We're going to be right back with the final segment of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman, The Verdict. was a trial lawyer. He sliced him and diced him. People used to ask me, Larry, what caused you to start Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch, given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk? In a meat packing plant. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. A very special prosecutor, Larry Klayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. Finally, I want to talk about other things that have been happening this week that are important. I, you know, I was an international trade lawyer. That's how I saw that big money contributions perverted government decisions, perverted decisions in the courts, perverted everything, frankly. Uh, the international trade legal community in Washington, D.C., like everything else, is corrupt. I saw bribes going back and forth all over the place, frankly. Well, this week, the president says he's going to put tariffs on American steel, on imported steel, and aluminum to protect the American industry. Now, I'm a free trader. I believe let us trade without restriction. It helps the American consumer. But if there are unfair trade practices, then in fact there should be 
some type of relief. Now, what I think the president is doing by saying that he's going to put 25 percent tariffs on steel and aluminum, and if, in fact, they ever went into effect, next time you go to buy a car, it'll probably raise the price between three and $5,000 because we get the steel primarily from overseas. And now today we have Toyota, we have other foreign manufacturers in the United States employing Americans. It's going to make the price of steel much higher. So the imports coming from countries that don't have plants here are going to have a competitive advantage in cars in particular. This is how tariffs and quotas and everything else distorts trade. It's not going to help us. Years ago, uh, we put large duties on computer chips from Japan. Now, our computer manufacturers were dependent on the computer chips from Japan, so we almost drove ourselves out of business in the computer industry because the Japanese, they were vertically integrated. They had the chips, they had the computers, and they were able to practically beat our pants off. Now, I think what the president has in mind, and this is why I love this president, he's willing to use leverage. He's threatening these large tariffs. I don't think he's ever going to put them on, but he's trying to get a better, fair system of trading with these countries that have steel industries that are dumping steel in this country at predatory prices. So I just wanted to mention that because that's something out there in the news and you're going to hear a lot about it. But it also speaks to the corruption in Washington, D.C. This president knows how to use power, and I give him the benefit of the doubt. And it's why we need to save this president. It's why you need a special counsel because the Mullers of the world, the Obamas who are being financed by George Soros, in his $8 million mansion in Washington, D.C., in Calorama. The Clintons, they're still out there. She's the wicked witch of the left. The husband's still slippering around, you know, God knows with what intern, but also doing damage to this country. You've got the intelligence agencies that are out of control. It's still the Obama deep state that will destroy anybody who stands up to them or stands up to anything, selling their services. This country's under attack, and that's why we need a president who will represent us, whether it's with steel tariffs and quotas, and getting a fair trading system, whether it's with immigration, whether it's with gun control. You know, once you go down that slippery slope, the guns will ultimately be taken away. doesn't mean that you can't have a higher age for an AK-15. But the problem is, and I think why the NRA fears that, is because once you give an inch, they'll take a foot, and that's the problem there. But you've got all these issues out there. And then we have, as I said earlier in the show, the Middle East is about ready to blow up You've got Prime Minister Netanyahu in Israel, who the left there, leftist Jews in Israel, and you know I'm of Jewish origin, although I'm a Christian, and I'm proud of that. The leftist Jewish community, both in this country and in Israel, are frankly a danger to our sur- survival, and they need to be countered. And they're trying to destroy Prime Minister Netanyahu, just like Trump's trying to be destroyed here. They have these phony investigations of, of bribery and everything else. And meanwhile, Iran is building up. They have facilities in Syria that are ready to destroy Israel. They're threatening to destroy us. They're close to having nuclear weapons. North Korea has nuclear weapons. Putin is threatening to use nuclear weapons on us, as we said. We need basically a president who will stand up to all of this, and we need to take these vicious, I wouldn't say monkeys, gorillas off his back. So that's why I want you to go to freedomwatchusa.org. FreedomWatchUSA.org. Sign our petition. Urge that I be made special counsel. Donate to our cause. We need the resources. We don't have that much. And we need your help. We need your prayers. We need God's help. And like our founding fathers, and I'm not equating myself to Washington Jefferson, uh, Franklin, and others, but I do believe I'm on a mission. I do believe that God wants me to do this. And I hope that you will join me in that quest. And I hope that you'll pray, because our country needs all the prayers that we can get. And I want to God bless you and your family, everybody, because we are under great threat and jeopardy. But I do believe that if we hang together, we will not hang separately. And I'll see you next week. God bless you.